iron in the soul. What's up, YouTube? This is your big brother, King Jabez, back today with another very important message. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share this video, leave a comment, and let me know what you think about my content. In addition to that, please feel free to follow me over on Instagram at the King Jabez, as well as my website, theironsoul.com. Whatever you decide to do, it will be greatly appreciated. Today's video is entitled, You Took Down a High-Ranking Warlock. Listen to what I'm saying here today. This is a very important message because this is necessary in order for us to see the spiritual, physical, mental, financial breakthroughs that we want to see as we end 2023, the last three months coming up here, October, November, December, going right to 2024, a season of transition. I'm going to speak this word. What I believe is going to be a season of a transfer, supernatural transfer of financial wealth, a time where the true chosen ones, the people who are being used by Most High, will be revealed, and those who are not will be exposed for who they are. And so I do believe what is happening now is that there's a shift happening in the spirit world. And, and the ones who are real are offending the fake. Whenever the real speak up, the fake will always be intimidated. This is why some of you, even just your presence, will check people. You could be minding your business, going to a room, and, and people feel this type of way. I think it was uh, a money man said this on Twitter. You know, when a real one goes to a room, those people feel this type of way. They, get on, they start squirming. They feel, they feel this type of way. Because your presence, which is another way of saying your true spirit, the essence of who you really are, it makes them uncomfortable. Because you have to understand, when we talk about growth, we're talking about seeds, we're talking about planting. So what happens when the real ones are planted, you will uproot the fake. And so what's happening right now, some of you, I'm going to speak this word, you are uprooting the fake at your job. You are uprooting the fake in your own community. You are uprooting the fake in your own family. And so you are the one that's, and this is what it really means to be chosen. You're not chosen just to say, hey, look at me, I'm a chosen one. No, you are chosen. You are called by the most high to offend. I know you don't want to hear that. You know, you're not called to be the nice guy all the time. You are called to shake stuff up because if you're going to gain territory, if you're going to get the resources and blessings that you want, you have to understand in the new land are people there that think you should not be there. So you're going to have to go there, take them down in order to receive what is yours. I had a dream, vision, revelation concerning this message today. And this man went into this really big house. And this house has some very important people in there. Right? And so this man went there and he, he did what he had to do. And he was trying to get into the room. The room speaks of opportunity. The room speaks of doors. The room speaks of influence. The room speaks of wealth. So he's in this room now. He had to fight to get there. And once he got there, there were several men who were working overtime to get him out of there. I'm talking about they called the they called 12. This is a dream, by the way. He got sprayed with maize. All oh, this is in a dream. You can't make this up. Took off running and he came right back to the same house and got a key out the house. You draw? So this man, this and so the revelation is this. This house speaks of new land, opportunity. And the authority speaks of those, the warlocks, the people who have the positions, the people who have the power. And the warlocks often control everyone with their money. So if we're going to regain territory, there has to be someone strong enough to take down the warlock that is manipulating the people. That has um, authority that's not on the power. See, you have to understand that true spiritual authority only comes from submission and only comes from the Most High. What we have today, and I'm going to say this as calm as possible so this not be taken as a personal attack. Many people today, let me make, bring my voice a little lower. Many people today, there is a culture that has been developed when there is a lack of honor. So we don't want to get authority through submission. We want to get authority by undermining, by dishonor and disrespect. So what we have is a culture of rebellion, right? Rebellion is, is basically power that's not under authority. So everyone wants the clout. Everyone wants the power, the, the status, the respect. 
but we don't want to do it in a way that requires a process. A process requires time. Time means trials. Time means hardship. Trials means going through. It means grinding, working, developing. The shortcut is to undermine. The shortcut is to disrespect. The shortcut is to build off someone else's work. You know what I mean? And not build your own stuff. And so many people take shortcuts. And what's going to happen in these last days is that real men and women of God are being raised up as we speak. There is a shift. I've been talking about this. Other people are speaking on it. There's a shift coming. If you watch my content, I've said this over on TikTok. I've said it on this platform. And I'm going to say again today in this, in this talk, there's a shift coming. You better believe that. The most high is tired of playing with people. I mean, the, the stuff that's happening, if, you, if, if we're just honest and just look at our world right now, let's just be real. It's messed up down here. You know, people just care about, you know what, and money. That's it. You know what I mean? And that leads to dishonor. That leads to fights. That leads to confusion. Folks don't like each other. We, we live in a very savage society right now. You know what I mean? And, and that's because there's a, a temptation to get that power the wrong way without being under authority. So you have power under authority, which is spiritual power. And when you have spiritual power, you speak even when you don't say a word. You, you draw? So your presence goes before you. You don't even have to open your mouth up and say, I got power. Mm -mm. You can go into a room and be quiet and folks start turning their head. They'll feel you from across. I, I promise you, if I'm lying, I'm flying. They'll feel you from across the room. You hear me? <laughs> they could be at the grocery store and I'll say you and I want to be what? what happened? It's a shift. And, and why is that? Because our bodies, let's talk spiritual warfare for a second. Our bodies are temples. This is my home. The real me is my spirit, which you can't see. So this is not even the real me. I know it sounds crazy, doesn't it? This isn't the real me. This is just simply an outward shell that I live in temporarily, but my spirit will live forever. This is why when people leave this earth, there's a picture of them in the sky with all white on, right? What are we all subconsciously acknowledging? We are all subconsciously acknowledging that there is a life after death. There's a real world. So the spirit in you will sometimes check the spirits in other people without you saying a word. So that tells me there's a lot that happens behind the scenes that you and I can't even see. So some of you right now, you don't even know how powerful you are. You are literally uprooting warlocks that are destroying people. That, in other words, you're, you're breaking spells. Let me start breaking. Let me, let me talk. You're breaking spells. You're breaking some of those curses that have kept you back. This is why some of you are having dreams with your, your mother, your father, loved ones who pass away, and you're seeing as there's a transition. You're breaking away from some of that. And this is why many of you, it was in your best interest to not get along with your family. Not because you are better than them, but because you have been chosen. You are one of the chosen ones. There's a lot of us, by the way. It's not just five of us. It's a lot of us. Okay? You are one of the chosen ones who was chosen to start a new heritage. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying today... Prepare to receive your inheritance. There is no inheritance. There is no breakthrough. There is no wealth without trouble first. In other words, there is no triumph without trouble first. I would say the a perfect example of today's teaching would be with something we see in the sports world, right? Many people right now are interested in what's happening over in Colorado with Deion Sanders' his son and the team. In the transition they're making, it's kind of like a David versus Goliath, right? David versus Goliath has been used in the sports world for many years since I was a little boy, you know, and that typically means when an underdog wins. So what am I saying? This, this, we're in a season of underdogs winning. Receive that word. Receive that word. We are finna enter a season. I'm speaking that with power. We are entering a season where the underdogs about to start winning, right? The, the, the Davids are about to start taking down the Goliaths. And we see this happen in sports when a high-ranked team loses to an unranked team. You draw? So when I say take down a high-ranking high warlock, think of a high-ranking team. Um, one of the analogies, this is an old one. This, this is going back to my boyhood now. When Notre Dame, they were, I think at the time, that was my favorite team growing up. I was a real big Notre Dame football fan as a boy. I like football more as a boy than I do now. I don't watch as much now as I used to, but I was a fanatic when I was a boy. I watched, I mean, we're talking college game day on Saturday. I'm talking about big, we're seeing big boy childhood now. College game day on Saturday. I would watch ESPN. I was like a walking ESPN. I used to trip my stepfather and his friends out 
<laughs> I mean, I could tell him what the quarterback did. This guy did that. I was on it. You know what I mean? That was that was very important to me at that time in my life. And so I, I would, I was so disappointed when this year I can't remember the year it was. Now, my favorite team, Notre Dame, they they lost to Boston College, who I think wasn't even ranked at that time. And so they were the number one team in the country. And I believe I want to say. They were undefeated. I think they were like 9-0, 10-0, and to go to championship, right? Because, you know, college football is a very small window of, of um, for mistakes. If you lose one or two games, it's over with, you know, winning the championship. So I think they were like 10-0, and 9-0. And, and had they won this game, they would have been a national, you know, at least went to the bowl game at least to be considered to be the national champion. Well, that all came to a halt when they lost to an unranked team, Boston College, took them down. That was an example of David taking down Goliath. Another example of that, I would say, in the NBA. You know what? My boy, Steph Curry. That's my boy now. I didn't like him at first. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I was kind of hating at first. Big bro was hating on Steph. That's my boy now. I ain't, I'm, that's, that's my, I'm rocking with him now. Hard now. That's my boy. One of my favorite players. He earned my respect. And Steph Curry was the David. And he took down Goliath. You know, LeBron and them, they, they, they can't beat Bron. And, and Curry was pulling up a half court. Bang. Let's go. <laughs> you hear me? Yeah, every, every time he touched ball, he didn't even hit three. You know what I mean? And so he was the, he was the underdog, the, the short guy out there couldn't do nothing with him. Bang, let's go. I'm gonna drop fifty on y'all today. What you talking about? Pow, half court, Madison Square Garden, New York City. Pow, let's go. Right? It was an example of David Steph Curry taking down the Goliaths of the NBA, and he earned everybody's respect. Those who didn't like him at first, including me, Big Bro was hating. Didn't like Steph at first. That's my boy now. I ain't going to lie to you. One of my favorite players at this point. He earned my respect. Why? Because he took down the big dogs. And some of you, that's your calling in life. Do you hear your big brother today? Do you know who you are? You are the, That's why your life has been so difficult, my boy. Sis. You are called to take down the big dogs. And guess what? It's not just one of them. It's a bunch of them. Okay, so I can't do it by myself. You can't do it by yourself. But guess what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take down one of them jokers. I'm gonna take down one of them. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be Dave. I'm gonna take down one of them Goliaths. And you should be saying the same thing. There's one you could take down. And so a high-ranking warlock, it speaks of an individual who has power, who who is basically intimidating and dominating and manipulating the tribe. Such as Goliath. How big was Goliath? Goliath, according to study, was nine feet tall. He was a giant. Almost tall as a basketball room. Huge. Presented himself, says, I'm going to kill all y'all. You hear me? Had everybody, had these men scared. And Lil David, the youngin, Lil Bro. <laughs> Lil Bro pull up, said, I got this. I got it. Right? And took care of the business. Stood on business. Youngest one stood on business. Big bro was scared. They couldn't do nothing. Everybody hemmed up. And little bro come in and say, I got this. Get out of the way. You hear me? That's what we're talking about here today. That's a perfect example of taking down a high-ranking warlock. Because had David not did that, if he didn't do that, who knows what would happen? He could have came over there and took their lives. He could have took the late. Probably could have caused devastation for everybody. So this is not this is not small. What you're battling, if you can overcome this, you finna help everybody out. You feel me? So we you only need a few of us to make some real big moves and to take down some of these people who are intimidating and dominating the people of the Most High. So when we speak of warlocks, we're talking about really kings who are not being good stewards of the position that they have. This speaks of men who have power, who have wealth, who have influence, and they're not doing the right thing with it. They are taking advantage of the people. They are taking advantage of the women. Some of you ladies, you fall prey to the guys like this, right? So there is a time for conflict. Many of you think being a chosen one means you're supposed to just be the nice guy in every situation. No, sometimes there is something, I've said this before, I, was, I will say this again in today's video. There is something called a confrontation anointing. 
Some things have to be confronted. Everything won't be solved by walking away, my boy, sis. Everything won't be solved by being a nice guy. Sometimes you have to step up and say, well, you know what? This is not happening. Not under my watch. And that's what we're talking about in today's video. Remember my other video? A high-ranking person is, is hindering you? Guess what? If a high-ranking person is hindering you, that means you got to take them down. You hear me? Or you, you either take them down. I'm going to talk to you. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice to you. You either take them down. I'm going to talk to you direct now. You either take them down or they're going to dominate you your whole life. Do you hear me? And some of you right now, you, you are going to let certain spirits. I'm talking to you now. Certain people. Don't get mad at me, big brother. I know you're mad at me. Don't get mad at me. You're going to let certain people dominate you your whole life. At what point, sis, bro, do you get tired of that? Let your big brother talk to you today. I'm trying to fire you up. At what point in your life do you stand out for yourself? Right? I mean, come on now. Me being on this platform, brothers, sisters, this is an example of your big bro standing up for himself. I have been around some high-ranking warlocks. Hello, I've been around them. And I know from experience, they will dominate you your whole life if you allow them to. They will intimidate you your whole life if you allow them to. So the purpose of today's talk is to empower you, to encourage you to stand up for yourself. And that will indirectly stand up for other people too. Because if people see you do it, then they will have the confidence to do it themselves. And this is why you are under so much pressure. Because there are there's a lot of spiritual people, spiritual authority, not the right ones, the wrong spirits that don't want you to win. Think about the dream I gave you in this video. This guy got amazed. He got they, they, they did everything they could possible to stop this guy. That's some of y'all's story. And this gives context to your pain. This gives context to why your life has been so difficult, why you didn't get along with your own family. You're special. Let me, let me tell you flat out, you're special in a good way. You got a very important mission. And if you can pull this off, a lot of people will benefit from this. So let me say this. Let's give me some water. This is actually the fourth bottle. I've already had a gallon, so big bro, I'm doing two gallons today. I'm back on my fitness journey. I'm going hard in the gym. I already had one gallon. This is four bottles to my second one. One person can make a difference. One man, one woman makes a difference. When one person gets, I'll tell you, when one person pulls something off, you can inspire thousands of people in some cases millions so that's how important your life is you say this message is not for me i would guess this message is for probably most of my audience maybe not a few of y'all but for the vast majority of y'all this is for you you either stand up or get ran over your whole life it's that simple so the message i believe is clear Take back your blessing. Take your place. Take the authority that belongs to you and don't allow anyone to take you out of your rightful position. That's all I have for you today. This is your big brother, King Jabez. Thanks for listening. God bless. Peace.